question, and um, it's good to be here. I feel like this uh, project has been a long time coming. Um, I want to explain that um, the product uh, of um, the research that Susie and I um, did is this report that I just handed in to Elizabeth today. And it was the first step for a historic structures report, which is going to help um, the Board of Belgrove decide exactly how to treat the house um, known as Fort Bowman, or also known as Harmony Hall, and now Bowman's Fort, <laughs> the house with multiple names. Um, the purpose, so was to gain an, the first step in, in doing the historic structures report with the funding um, that came from the Hype Family Association and also um, from the Virginia Humanities Foundation, was to do a basically a historic context of the building and get an understanding, because there are so many things that have been written about it, but look at primary um, resources and place the building within a context. Um, within this publication, there is a, a history, an overview history, a timeline, um, and then I found some photos and plans that I'm going to share with you. Um, and there's a very detailed annotated bibliography for people who want to do future research. Um, as well as some interviews. Uh, I was able to interview Irvin O'Connell um, before he passed away and um, some previous tenants of the house that um, proved to be very interesting and I'll share some of that with you. Um, we consulted official records including census data, land tax records, uh, deeds, wills, and then these photo collections. Um, and I want to introduce um, the historian that worked on this project along with me, and that's Margaret Peters, also known as Susie. That was the Susie that I sent. And um, Susie is a remarkable woman. She uh, has a history degree from Vassar, and I met her um, during her 34-year uh, tenure at the Virginia Department of Historic Resources, where she was the historian there and also the publications manager. And since her retirement about six years ago, um, she started working with me on a lot of projects, and uh, we've had quite a good time, have been very fruitful. We've worked on a, a series of historic districts in Fauquier County. I believe we um, just listed our 17th historic district uh, together. We make a great team. She lives in Richmond. Uh, we talk about 10 times a day, Susie, okay. wouldn't you say? <laughs> <laughs> Drives her husband crazy. <laughs> um, but Susie is, uh, not only is she a very professional historian, but she's a very good writer. And um, she's, she and her husband, he's a retired attorney. Um, I don't know how many years ago you published the book about it's Virginia. 1995. 1995, published a, a book, it's a must-have book, about um, all the Virginia courthouses. And um, Susie's husband is a professional photographer on the side, and he took the photos and Susie did the research um, and wrote it. In addition, she's uh, recently completed a history of Richmond, um, the City Department of Public Utilities, which will be published next year. And she just recently published um, Conserving the Commonwealth, which is a history of the environmental movement in Virginia, which is very interesting, um, talking about easements and historic preservation. Uh, what I thought we'd do today is Susie's going to begin, and we're going to, um, there's a very detailed timeline included in the report. We just took excerpts from it. Susie's going to touch on those briefly so you get a background um, and an understanding of uh, Harmony Hall. And then I will get up and do a segment on um, some of the historic photographs that I found. Um, and even though this project was just meant to be um, oriented towards the history, I couldn't help myself, and so we sort of started uh, looking at the architectural history, which will hopefully be continued in much more detail in the next phase. So, with that, I'd like to introduce Susie. And I can take over there for the time being, but I'll need you back. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm really sorry about the confusion on the name thing for, for me. I uh, always have to explain to groups how that came about because I think it does get some, it's somewhat disconcerting. And unfortunately, I think sometimes distracts from the major point of um, 
me being here. <laughs> um, I was born in Philadelphia and um, was named Margaret Holland Ross. And lovely name, but I had two cousins who thought it was much too lengthy for a small baby and named me, uh, decided to name me after a comic strip character in the Philadelphia Enquirer. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents and aunts and uncles and everybody sort of stood around and they couldn't decide what to call me, so they kept referring to the baby as Susie Q. And I never got rid of it. And my mother tried. I went to college. I was registered as Margaret. And they ended up having to put Susie in parenthesis in the college catalog. Because, um, anyway, so it's sort of a, a boring story, but I just want to get it out of the way. Um, I answered to both names. I've always used Margaret professionally because, quite frankly, it carries a little more heft than Susan. And when you're a woman starting to work back when I did, which was in 1968, believe me, you need it. So, let's start a little bit. Can you all hear me okay? Um, we're going to talk a little bit. Um, I don't know whether when you all were studying history in grade school you were ever um, assigned the, the responsibility of developing a timeline, but it's a very valuable tool and one which in looking at buildings and structures and properties is always useful. Um, and what we did, we have a fairly detailed timeline and what we put here are just a few of the sort of highlights to give you a sense of where we are or where you all are in this particular property. 1709 is probably the earliest date. That's when Joe's tight and his wife and daughter traveled first to New York, um, not too far from Poughkeepsie where I went to school, and then moved to Pennsylvania. In 1730, after having lived in Pennsylvania for about 15 or 16 years, um, uh, George Bowman, who was, had come with Joe's type, um, had um, married his daughter. Uh, in 1731, Height with his family and son-in-law, George Bowman, uh, and several other German families moved to this poor part of Virginia. Very fortuitous for them, I think. In 1734, George Bowman purchased a um, 1,000 acres that includes the area of Fort Bowman. Um, the most, probably the most important date, and the one that most people, of course, always ask about, is the building date, or the date when we feel that the, build, that the house itself was constructed, and that is 1753. And Morrell will explore a little bit what our thinking has been on establishing that date, although that is, again, the sort of traditional date. Um, in 1764, there were several references in histories written in the 19th century to George Bowman's residence serving as a fort or a place of refuge for his neighbors in the face of marauding Indians. It was not built as a fort, but because it was a stone structure and a very sturdy building, it was like several other stone buildings um, in Shenandoah and in particularly in Page County were often referred to as forts. It's a bit of a misnomer because it's not like an army fort that was constructed, but was selected undoubtedly because it was a good safe place to be. In 1764, there are several references, um, oh my God, excuse me, that one I did. 1768 was the death of George Bowman and the presentation of his will, which was a very interesting document that named his youngest son, and he had a number of children, but his youngest son was Isaac, and he was named as heir to the house and plantation with the land adjoining. And that's, again, the first specific reference to the house that we're talking about here today. In 1779, there was a very famous letter written by Joseph Bowman, Isaac Bowman's older brother, recounting the story of, some, of Isaac's capture by the Indians and some of his adventures um, 